Today, we're going to be looking at some of the features that are not available by default when you first run Zoom. Some of the things that we'll be discussing today are how to enable breakout rooms in your Zoom conference call, how to turn on nonverbal communication, how to have more extended control over what participants can and cannot do. Those advanced features can only be turned on from the command center that is accessed through the website. So head over to zoom.us and sign in if you have an account. If you don't have an account with Zoom, sign up for free. Once you've done that, click on My Account. Once you've accessed your account, click on Settings. Uh, let's have a look at some of the settings that you can turn on or turn off to have a better experience with Zoom. First setting that we're gonna have a look at is Join Before Host. If turned on, then participants will be able to join the meeting before you even there. I normally have this on off. If I'm not there, then participants will be put on hold until I join the meeting. The next very important uh, option that you need to uh, look at and probably turn on is mute participants upon entry. If we turn this option on, Zoom will do two things. First, it will automatically mute all the participants during the meeting. The second thing, only you as a host will have a control as to who you will unmute and at what time. This feature is especially helpful if you host a meeting with many participants where some people might not necessarily know how to mute themselves at the beginning of the meeting and this will create some disturbance, some echo, some interference. When I know that I'll be holding a meeting with lots of people and some of the people might not be users of Zoom, I normally have this toggle on on. I do not need to worry about external noises interfering with the meeting. And then when I need to invite someone to speak, I can simply unmute them and then mute them when their time is finished. The next option that you might want to have a look at is chat. And whether this feature will be on or not largely depends on the context of your meeting. I normally turn it off when I have a class. I want to limit the number of things that can distract students. When you turn off chat function, it will automatically turn off private chat as well. Private chat is where participants can send messages to one another. Uh, I think it's important to know that you can disable chat or you can disable private chat separately. Again, depending on your context, but do know that you can disable both chat and private chat. Moving down the list, another option that I found useful, allow host to put attendees on hold. I normally turn this feature on. It doesn't hurt to be able to temporarily remove some attendees uh, from the meeting. You never know what will happen during the meeting and having this function is really helpful. And moving down the list, screen sharing. Now here we can select who will be allowed to share the screen during the meeting. Is it only host or all participants? Again, it depends on the context of your meeting. I normally have it on all participants and having participants muted only you can invite them to share their screen. Related to screen sharing is remote control. Uh, during screen sharing, if remote control is on, the person who is sharing can allow others to control the shared content. Again, it's down to you how you would like to share the screen. I normally leave it off, so when I share the screen, no one else can uh, interact with this content. The next feature, which I believe is really helpful, especially when you hold meetings with large number of participants and you need to have a way of collecting feedback, and it's normally not a good idea to ask people individually. You will have to unmute them, then mute them again. But if you just wanna ask one question and have an instant feedback, then nonverbal feedback is the way to go. When nonverbal feedback is turned on, if you click on participants or manage participants, all participants will have access to nonverbal clues like yes. And if I click yes, a yes will appear next to my name here. If I click no, again, this sign will appear next to my name. There's thumbs up, there's thumbs down, clap hands, go faster. And as a host, you can then clear them all. I believe it's a very useful tool when you're running a meeting with many participants and you need to collect an instant feedback. This feature is uh, off by default, but I, I strongly encourage you to turn it on. Moving on to advanced settings, breakout rooms is off by default. If you turn it on and you run the meeting, Zoom will enable you to uh, assign participants to breakout rooms. A new button will appear on your uh, user interface and then because I only have one participant now there's no way I can uh, use this feature you can manually assign participants to group break them out 
for, let's say, a small discussion if you're running a lesson or a lecture, and then bring them back together for a whole class instruction. This feature is off by default, but I think it's a very valuable feature if you're using Zoom for instructional purposes. The next feature that is a game changer if you're an educator and you're using Zoom to deliver online lessons is attention tracking. When this feature is on, when you share your screen, you will see an indicator in the participation panel if a meeting or a webinar attendee does not have Zoom in focus during your screen sharing. I think it's a wonderful feature to have to see whether your students are following your screen sharing or not, and then you can well, gently remind them probably to get back to Zoom. Uh, one tip uh, for you as a host is when you uh, turn on any of these uh, features, let's say if you turn nonverbal communication, it's important to let participants know how to use them when I normally do, I share my screen, I click share and then desktop one. If I want my participants to use nonverbal communication, I'll, I'll instruct them, go to uh, participants and you will see this nonverbal clues. I'm gonna ask the question, is the audio okay? If the audio is okay, click yes. If the audio is not okay and you cannot clear me, hear me clearly, say no. So make sure you instruct your participants as to what is going to happen. If you're using breakout rooms, make sure that you notify them that we're going to be using breakout rooms now. You will have time to discuss something with your colleague and so forth. Make sure you share your screen first and then instruct your audience as to what do you expect from them uh, using the features. These are the features that I normally customize uh, when I host the meeting. Do remember that once you customize those settings in the control center, they will be applicable to all the meetings that you're running. If you want to change the meetings, make sure you do that before you start the meeting. Thanks for taking your time to check out this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Bye-bye.